The Tarim Basin is an endoric basin in northwest China occupying an area of about 1,020,000 square kilometres Located in China's Xinjiang region, it is sometimes used synonymously to refer the southern half of the province, or Nanjiang Chinese, Nanjiang Pinyin, Nanjiang, literally, southern Xinjiang, as opposed to the northern half of the province known as Zungaria or Beijing. Its northern boundary is the Tian Shan mountain range and its southern boundary is the Kunlun Mountains on the edge of the Qinghai Tibet Plateau. The Taklamakan Desert dominates much of the basin. The historical Uyghur name for the Tarim Basin is Altashar, Luyu which means, six cities, in Uyghur. <laughs> Geography and relation to Xinjiang Xinjiang consists of two main geographically, historically, and ethnically distinct regions with different historical names, Zungaria and the Tarim Basin Altashar, before Qing China unified them into one political entity called Xinjiang Province in 1884. At the time of the Qing conquest in 1759, Zungaria was inhabited by steppe-dwelling, nomadic Tibetan Buddhist Dzungar people, while the Tarim Basin Altashar was inhabited by sedentary, oasis-dwelling, Turkic-speaking Muslim farmers, now known as the Uyghur people. They were governed separately until 1884. <laughs> Tarim Basin locations North side, the Chinese called this the Tian Shan Nan Lu or Tian Shan South Road, as opposed to the Bei Lu north of the mountains. Along it runs the modern highway and railroad while the middle Tarim River is about 100 km south. Kashgar was where the caravans met before crossing the mountains. Bachu or Maralbachi, Ukturpan north of the main road, Aksu on the large Aksu River, Kucha was once an important kingdom, Luntai, Korla, now a large town, Karashar near Basin Lake, Turpan north of the Turpan Depression and south of the Bogda Shan, Hami, then southeast to Anxi and the Gansu Corridor. Center, most of the basin is occupied by the Taklamakan Desert which is too dry for permanent habitation. The Yarkand, Kashgar and Aksu rivers join to form the Tarim River which runs along the north side of the basin. Formerly it continued to Lulan, but some time after 330 AD it turned southeast near Korla toward Charkilik and Lulan was abandoned. The Tarim ended at the now dry Lop Nur which occupied a changing position east of Lulan. Eastward is the fabled Jade Gate which the Chinese considered the gateway to the western regions. Beyond that is Dunhuang with its ancient manuscripts and then Anxi at the west end of the Gansu Corridor. South side, Kashgar, Yangi Hisar, famous for its knives, Yarkand, once larger than Kashgar, Kargalik, Yicheng, with a route to India, Karakash, Khotan, the main source of Chinese jade, eastward the land becomes more desolate, Korea, Yushan, Nia, Minfeng, Kiemo, Shershan, Charkilik, Ruojang. The modern road continues east to Tibet. There is no current road east across the Kumtag Desert to Dunhuang, but caravans somehow made the crossing through the Yangon Pass south of the Jade Gate. Roads and passes, rivers and caravan routes, the southern Xinjiang Railway branches from the Langsan Railway near Turpan, follows the north side of the basin to Kashgar and curves southeast to Khotan. Roads, the main road from eastern China reaches Urumqi and continues as Highway 314 along the north side to Kashgar. Highway 315 follows the south side from Kashgar to Charkilik and continues east to Tibet. There are currently four north-south roads across the desert. 218 runs from Charkilik to Korla along the former course of the Tarim forming an oval whose other end is Kashgar. The Tarim Desert Highway, a major engineering achievement, crosses the center from Nia to Luntai. The new Highway 217 follows the Khotan River from Khotan to near Aksu. A road follows the Yarkand River from Yarkand to Baka. East of the Korla Charkilik road travel continues to be very difficult. Rivers coming south from the Tian Shan join the Tarim, the largest being the Aksu. Rivers flowing north from the Kunlun are usually named for the town or oasis they pass through. Most dry up in the desert, only the Hoden River reaching the Tarim in good years. An exception is the Kiemo River which flowed northeast into Lop Nor. Ruins in the desert imply that these rivers were once larger. Caravans and passes – The original caravan route seems to have followed the south side. At the time of the Han Dynasty conquest it shifted to the center Jade Gate Lulan Korla. When the Tarim changed course about 330 AD it shifted north to Hami. 
A minor route went north of the Tian Shan. When there was war on the Gansu Corridor trade entered the basin near Charkilik from the Kaidam Basin. The original route to India seems to have started near Yarkand and Kargilik, but it is now replaced by the Karakoram Highway south from Kashgar. To the west of Kashgar via the Urkshtam border crossing is the Alay Valley which was once the route to Persia. Northeast of Kashgar the Torugurt Pass leads to the Fergana Valley. Near Ukturpan the Bidel Pass leads to Lake Isak Kul and the steppes. Somewhere near Aksu the difficult Musart Pass led north to the Ili River Basin Kulya. Near Korla was the Iron Gate Pass and now the highway and railway north to Urumqi. From Turfan the easy Dabancheng Pass leads to Urumqi. The route from Charkilik to the Kaidam Plateau was of some importance when Tibet was an empire. North of the mountains is Zungaria with its central Gurbantungat Desert, Urumqi the capital and the Karame oil fields. The Kulya territory is the upper basin of the Ili River and opens out onto the Kazakh steppe with several roads eastward. The Zungarian Gate was once a migration route and is now a road and rail crossing. Tachang or Tarbagate is a road crossing and former trading post. <laughs> Geology The Tarim Basin is the result of an amalgamation between an ancient microcontinent and the growing Eurasian continent during the Carboniferous to Permian periods. At present, deformation around the margins of the basin is resulting in the microcontinental crust being pushed under Tian Shan to the north, and Kunlun Shan to the south. A thick succession of Paleozoic, Mesozoic and Cenozoic sedimentary rocks occupy the central parts of the basin, locally exceeding thicknesses of 15 km 9 miles. The source rocks of oil and gas tend to be mostly Permian mudstones and, less often, Ordovician strata which experienced an intense and widespread early Hercynian karstification. The effect of this event are e.g. Paleocarst reservoirs in the Tahe oil field. Below the level enriched with gas and oil is a complex Precambrian basement believed to be made up of the remnants of the original Tarim microplate, which accrued to the growing Eurasian continent in Carboniferous time. The snow on K2, the second highest mountain in the world, flows into glaciers which move down the valleys to melt. The melted water forms rivers which flow down the mountains and into the Tarim Basin, never reaching the sea. Surrounded by desert, some rivers feed the oases where the water is used for irrigation while others flow to salt lakes and marshes. Lop Nur is a marshy, saline depression at the east end of the Tarim Basin. The Tarim River ends in Lop Nur. The Tarim Basin is believed to contain large potential reserves of petroleum and natural gas. Methane comprises over 70% of the natural gas reserve, with variable contents of ethane. Topic history It is speculated that the Tarim Basin may be one of the last places in Asia to have become inhabited. It is surrounded by mountains and irrigation technologies might have been necessary. The Northern Silk Road on one route bypassed the Tarim Basin north of the Tian Shan Mountains and traversed it on three oases dependent routes one north of the Taklamakan Desert, one south, and a middle one connecting both through the Lop Nor region. The northern Tarim route ran from Kashgar over Aksu, Kucha, Korla, through the Iron Gate Pass, over Karasar, Jauhe, Turpan, Gauchang and Kumal to Anxi. The southern Tarim route ran from Kashgar over Yarkant, Kargalik, Pishan, Khotan, Korea, Nia, Karkin, Karkilik, Miran and Dunhuang to Anxi. The middle Tarim route, allowing the shortest possible itinerary of all four routes, connected Korla on the northern Tarim route over Lulan across the Lop Nor region with Dunhuang on the southern Tarim route. The Lop Nor region became uninhabitable in the 4th century and the middle route has been deserted since the 6th century. Topic early periods The earliest inhabitants of the Tarim Baron may be the Tocharians whose languages are the easternmost group of Indo-European languages. Caucasoid mummies have been found in various locations in the Tarim Basin such as Lulan, the Xiaohe tomb complex, and Karyl. These mummies have been suggested to be of Tocharian origin, and these people may have inhabited the region since at least 1800 BCE. They may be related to the Yuzi Chinese Yu Shi, Wade Giles, Yu Qi mentioned in Chinese texts. Protected by the Taklamakan Desert from steppe nomads, elements of Tocharian culture survived until the 7th century, at the dawning of the 800s with the arriving Turkic immigrants from the collapsing Uyghur Khaganate of modern-day Mongolia began to absorb the Tocharians to form the modern-day Uyghur ethnic group. 
Another people in the region besides Tocharian are the Indo-Iranian Saka people who spoke various Eastern Iranian Khotanese Scythian or Saka dialects. In the Achaemenid era Old Persian inscriptions found at Persepolis, dated to the reign of Darius I r. 522-486 BC, the Saka are said to have lived just beyond the borders of Sogdiana. Likewise an inscription dated to the reign of Xerxes I r. 486-465 BC has them coupled with the Dahai people of Central Asia. The contemporary Greek historian Herodotus noted that the Achaemenid Persians called all of the Indo-Iranian Scythian peoples as the Saka. They were known as the Sai, Sai Sai, Sky in archaic Chinese in ancient Chinese records. These records indicate that they originally inhabited Ili and Chu River valleys of modern Kazakhstan. In the Chinese Book of Han, the area was called the Land of the Sai, i.e. the Saka. Presence of a people believed to be Saka has also been found in various location in the Tarim Basin, for example in the Korea region at Umulak Kum Jombalak Kum, Uansha around 200 km east of Khotan, with a tomb dated to as early as the 7th century BC. According to the Sima Qian's Shiji, the nomadic Indo-European Yuzi originally lived between Tengri Ta Tian Shan and Dunhuang of Gansu, China. However, the Yuzi were assaulted and forced to flee from the Hexi Corridor of Gansu by the Mongolic forces of the Xiongnu ruler Modu Chanyu, who conquered the area in 177–176 BC decades before the Han Chinese conquest and colonization of Gansu or the establishment of the Protectorate of the Western Regions. In turn the Yuzi were responsible for attacking and pushing the Sai i.e. Saka west into Sogdiana, where in the mid-2nd century BC the latter crossed the Syr Darya into Bactria, but also into the Fergana Valley where they settled in Daewon, southwards towards northern India, and eastward as well where they settled in some of the oasis city-states of the Tarim Basin. Whereas the Yuzi continued westward and conquered Daxia around 177–176 BC, the Sai i.e. Saka, including some allied Tocharian peoples, fled south to the Pamirs before heading back east to settle in Tarim Basin sites like Yanchi, Yanchi Karasar and Chuchi, Guizhi Kucha. The Saka are recorded as inhabiting Khotan by at least the 3rd century and also settled in nearby Sheikh, Sha Che a town named after the Saka inhabitants i.e. Sa Gamala. Although the ancient Chinese had called Khotan Yushan, Utn its more native Iranian names during the Han period were Juzadana, Ku Sa Dan Na derived from Indo-Iranian Gostan and Gostana, the names of the town and region around it, respectively. <laughs> Han dynasty Around 200 BCE, the Yuzi were overrun by the Xiongnu. The Xiongnu tried to invade the western region of China, but ultimately failed and lost control of the region to the Chinese. The Han Chinese wrested control of the Tarim Basin from the Xiongnu at the end of the 1st century under the leadership of General Ban Chao CE, during the Han-Xiongnu War. The Chinese administered the Tarim Basin as the protectorate of the western regions. The Tarim Basin was later under many foreign rulers, but ruled primarily by Turkic, Han, Tibetan, and Mongolic peoples. The powerful Kushans, who conquered the last vestiges of the Indo-Greek kingdom, expanded back into the Tarim Basin in the 1st-2nd centuries CE, where they established a kingdom in Kashgar and competed for control of the area with nomads and Chinese forces. The Yuzi or Ruzi Chinese, Yu Shi Pinyin, Yuzi, Wade Giles, Yu 4 Chi 1, E, were an ancient people first reported in Chinese histories as nomadic pastoralists living in an arid grassland area in the western part of the modern Chinese province of Gansu, during the first millennium BC, after a major defeat by the Xiongnu. During the second century BC, the Yuzi split into two groups, the Greater Yuzi da Yuzi da Yu Shi and Lesser Yuzi, Shao Yuzi Shao Yu Shi. They introduced the Brahmi script, the Indian Prakrit language for administration, and Buddhism, playing a central role in the Silk Road transmission of Buddhism to Eastern Asia. Three pre-Han texts mention peoples who appear to be the Yuzi, albeit under slightly different names. The philosophical tract Guanzi 73, 78, 80 and 81 mentions nomadic pastoralists known as the Yuzi Yu Shi Old Chinese, asterisk Zhou Kje or Niuzi Niu Shi OC, asterisk JKJE, who supplied jade to the Chinese. The Guanzi is now generally believed to have been compiled around 26 BC, based on older texts, including some from the Qi state era of the 11th to 3rd centuries BC. 
Most scholars no longer attribute its primary authorship to Guan Zhang, a Qi official in the 7th century BC. The export of jade from the Tarim Basin, since at least the late 2nd millennium BC, is well documented archaeologically. For example, hundreds of jade pieces found in the tomb of Fu Hao c. 1200 BC originated from the Khotan area, on the southern rim of the Tarim Basin. According to the Guanzi, the Yuzi, Niuzi, unlike the neighboring Zongnu, did not engage in conflict with nearby Chinese states. The tale of King Mu, son of heaven early 4th century BC also mentions the Yuzi Yu-G O-C, asterisk Zhou K-J-E. The Yi Zhou Shu probably dating from the 4th to 1st century BC makes separate references to the Yuzi Yu Shi O-C, asterisk Zhou K-J-E and Yudi Yudi O-C, asterisk J-T-I-J. The latter may be a misspelling of the name Yuzi Yu Shi O-C, asterisk J-K-J-E found in later texts, composed of characters meaning moon and clan, respectively. Topic. Sui Tang dynasties After the Han dynasty, the kingdoms of the Tarim Basin began to have strong cultural influences on China as a conduit between the cultures of India and Central Asia to China. Indian Buddhists had previously travelled to China during the Han dynasty, but the Buddhist monk Kumarajiva from Kucha who visited China during the Six Dynasties was particularly renowned. The music and dances from Kucha were also popular in the Sui and Tang periods. During the Tang dynasty, a series of military expeditions were conducted against the oasis states of the Tarim Basin, then vassals of the western Turkic Khaganate. The campaigns against the oasis states began under Emperor Taizong with the annexation of Gaochang in 640. The nearby kingdom of Karasar was captured by the Tang in 644 and the kingdom of Kucha was conquered in 649. The expansion into Central Asia continued under Taizong's successor, Emperor Gaozong, who dispatched an army in 657 led by Su Dingfang against the western Turk Khagan Ashina Helu. Ashina was defeated and the Khaganate was absorbed into the Tang Empire. The Tarim Basin was administered through the Anxi Protectorate and the four garrisons of Anxi. Tang hegemony beyond the Pamir Mountains in modern Tajikistan and Afghanistan ended with revolts by the Turks, but the Tang retained a military presence in Xinjiang. These holdings were later invaded by the Tibetan Empire to the south in 670. For the remainder of the Tang dynasty, the Tarim Basin alternated between Tang and Tibetan rule as they competed for control of Central Asia. Topic. Kingdom of Khotan As a consequence of the Han Xiongnu War spanning from 133 BC to 89 AD, the Tarim Basin region of Xinjiang in northwest China, including the Sakha founded oasis city state of Khotan and Kashgar, fell under Han Chinese influence, beginning with the reign of Emperor Wu R. BC of the Han dynasty. Much like the neighboring people of the Kingdom of Khotan, people of Kashgar, the capital of the Shul Kingdom, spoke Sakha, one of the Eastern Iranian languages. As noted by the Greek historian Herodotus, the contemporary Persians labeled all Scythians as the Sakha. Indeed, modern scholarly consensus is that the Sakha language, ancestor to the Pamir languages in northern India and Khotanese in Xinjiang, China belongs to the Scythian languages. During China's Tang Dynasty (618–907 AD), the region once again came under Chinese suzerainty with the campaigns of conquest by Emperor Taizong of Tang (r. 626–649). From the late 8th to 9th centuries, the region changed hands between the Chinese Tang Empire and the rival Tibetan Empire. By the early 11th century the region fell to the Muslim Turkic peoples of the Kara Khanid Khanate, which led to both the Turkification of the region as well as its conversion from Buddhism to Islam. Suggestive evidence of Khotan's early link to India are minted coins from Khotan dated to the 3rd century bearing dual inscriptions in Chinese and Gandhari Prakrit in the Kharosthi script. Although Prakrit was the administrative language of nearby Shanshan, 3rd century documents from that kingdom record the title Hinaja i.e. Generalissimo for the king of Khotan, Vegeta Simha, a distinctively Iranian-based word equivalent to the Sanskrit title Senapati, yet nearly identical to the Khotanese Saka Hinesa attested in contemporary documents. This along with the fact that the king's recorded regnal periods were given in Khotanese as Kasuna implies an established connection between the Iranian inhabitants and the royal power. 
According to the late professor of Iranian studies Ronald E. Emmerich, d. 2001. He contended that Khotanese Saka language royal rescripts of Khotan dated to the 10th century, makes it likely that the ruler of Khotan was a speaker of Iranian. Furthermore, he elaborated on the early name of Khotan. The name of Khotan is attested in a number of spellings, of which the oldest form is Hva Tana, in texts of approximately the 7th to the 10th century AD written in an Iranian language itself called Hva Tana by the writers. The same name is attested also in two closely related Iranian dialects, Sogdian and Tumshuk. Attempts have accordingly been made to explain it as Iranian, and this is of some importance historically. My own preference is for an explanation connecting it semantically with the name Saka, for the Iranian inhabitants of Khotan. In northwest China, Khotanese Saka language documents, ranging from medical texts to Buddhist literature, have been found primarily in Khotan and Tumshuk northeast of Kashgar. They largely predate the arrival of Islam to the region under the Turkic Kara Khanids. Similar documents in the Khotanese Saka language were found in Dunhuang dating mostly to the 10th century. Topic. Turkic influx The collapse of the Uyghur Khaganate in 840 AD led to the movement of the Uyghurs south to Turpan and Gansu, and some absorbed by the Karluks. The Uyghurs of Turfan or Kocho became Buddhists. In the 10th century, the Karluks, Yagmas, Chijils and other Turkic tribes founded the Kara Khanid Khanate in Semirishya, western Tian Shan, and Kashgaria. Islamization of the Tarim Basin The Karakhanids became the first Islamic Turkic dynasty in the 10th century when Sultan Sadduk Bufra Khan converted to Islam in 966 and controlled Kashgar. Sadduk Bufra Khan and his son directed endeavors to preach Islam among the Turks and engage in conquests. Sadduk Bufra Khan's nephew or grandson Ali Arslan was slain by the Buddhists during the war. Buddhism lost territory to the Turkic Karakhanid Satak Bufra Khan during the Karakhanid reign around the Kashgar area. The Tarim Basin became Islamicized over the next few centuries. <laughs> Turkic Islamic Karakhanid conquest of Iranic Saka Buddhist Khotan In the 10th century, the Buddhist Iranic Saka Kingdom of Khotan was the only city-state that was not conquered yet by the Turkic Uyghur Buddhist and the Turkic Karakhanid Muslim states. The Buddhist Entitites of Dunhuang and Khotan had a tight-knit partnership, with intermarriage between Dunhuang and Khotan's rulers and Dunhuang's Mogo grottos and Buddhist temples being funded and sponsored by the Khotan royals, whose likenesses were drawn in the Mogo grottos. Halfway in the 10th century Khotan came under attack by the Karakhanid ruler Musa, a long war ensued between the Turkic Karakhanid and Buddhist Khotan which eventually ended in the conquest of Khotan by Kashgar by the Karakhanid leader Yusuf Qadir Khan around 1006. Accounts of the Muslim Karakhanid war against the Khotanese Buddhists are given in Takara of the four sacrificed Imams written sometime in the period from 1700 to 1849 which told the story of four Imams from Madin city possibly in modern-day Iraq who traveled to help the Islamic conquest of Khotan, Yarkand, and Kashgar by Yusuf Qadir Khan, the Karakhanid leader. The infidels were defeated and driven towards Khotan by Yusuf Qadir Khan and the four Imams, but the Imams were assassinated by the Buddhists prior to the last Muslim victory. After Yusuf Qadir Khan's conquest of new land in Altashar towards the east, he adopted the title, King of the East in China. In 1006, the Muslim Kara Khanid ruler Yusuf Qadir Qadir Khan of Kashgar conquered Khotan, ending Khotan's existence as an independent state. The Islamic conquest of Khotan led to alarm in the east and Dunhuang's Cave 17, which contained Khotanese literary works, was closed shut possibly after its caretakers heard that Khotan's Buddhist buildings were razed by the Muslims. The Buddhist religion had suddenly ceased to exist in Khotan. The Karakhanid Turkic Muslim writer Mahmud al Kashgari recorded a short Turkic language poem about the conquest. Topic. Conversion of the Buddhist Uyghurs The Buddhist Uyghurs of the Kingdom of Kocho and Turfan embraced Islam after conversion at the hands of the Muslim Chagatai Khazir Khwaja. Kara Del was a Mongolian ruled and Uyghur populated Buddhist kingdom. 
The Muslim Chagatai Khan Mansur invaded and used the sword to make the population convert to Islam. After being converted to Islam, the descendants of the previously Buddhist Uyghurs in Turfan believed that the infidel Kalmuks Zungars were the ones who built Buddhist monuments in their area, in opposition to the current academic theory that it was their own ancestral legacy. <laughs> Qing dynasty Xinjiang did not exist as one unit until 1884 under Qing rule. It consisted of the two separate political entities of Zungaria and the Tarim Basin Eastern Turkestan. Zungaria or ILI was called Zunbu Zunbu Zungar region Tianshan Bilu Tian Shan Beilu Northern March Xinjiang Xinjiang New Frontier or Kalmykia La Kalmoki in French it was formerly the area of the Zungar or Zungar Khanate Zunga or Han Guo, the land of the Zungar people. The Tarim Basin was known as Tianshan Nanlu Tian Shan Nanlu, Southern March, Huibu Wei Bu, Muslim region, Hujang Wei Zhang, Muslim frontier, Chinese Turkestan, Kashgaria, Little Bukharia, East Turkestan. And the traditional Uyghur name for it was Altashar Uyghur, Alti Shower Alt Senior Uly, Alta Shahar. It was formerly the area of the eastern Chagatai Khanate Dong Cha Hei Tai Han Guo, land of the Uyghur people before being conquered by the Dzungars. People of Tarim Basin According to census figures, the Tarim Basin is dominated by the Uyghurs. They form the majority population in cities such as Kashgar, Artush, and Hoden. There are, however, large pockets of Han Chinese in the region, such as Aksu and Korla. There are also smaller numbers of Wei and other ethnic groups, for example, the Tajiks who are concentrated at Tashkurgan in the Kashgar prefecture, the Kyrgyz in Kizilsa, and the Mongols in Bayangalan. The discovery of the Tarim mummies showed that the early people of the Tarim Basin were Europoids. According to Sinologist Victor H. Mayer, from around 1800 BC, the earliest mummies in the Tarim Basin were exclusively Caucasoid, or Europoid. He also said that East Asian migrants arriving in the eastern portions of the Tarim Basin around 3,000 years ago, and the Uyghur peoples, arrived after the collapse of the Orkhan Uyghur Kingdom, based in modern day Mongolia, around the year 842. He also noted that the people of Xinjiang are a mixture. Modern DNA and ancient DNA show that Uyghurs, Kazakhs, Kyrgyz, the peoples of Central Asia are all mixed Caucasian and East Asian. The modern and ancient DNA tell the same story." Professor James A. Millward described the original Uyghurs as physically mongoloid, giving as an example the images in Beziklik at Temple 9 of the Uyghur patrons, until they began to mix with the Tarim Basin's original Eastern Iranian inhabitants. The modern Uyghurs are now a mixed hybrid of East Asians and Europoids. <laughs> Archaeology Although archaeological findings are of interest in the Tarim Basin, the prime impetus for exploration was petroleum and natural gas. Recent research with help of GIS database have provided a fine-grained analysis of the ancient oasis of Nia on the Silk Road. This research led to significant findings, remains of hamlets with wattle and daub structures as well as farm land, orchards, vineyards, irrigation pools and bridges. The oasis at Nia preserves the ancient landscape. Here also have been found hundreds of 3rd and 4th century wooden accounting tablets at several settlements across the oasis. These texts are in the Kharosthi script native to today's Pakistan and Afghanistan. The texts are legal documents such as tax lists, and contracts containing detailed information pertaining to the administration of daily affairs. Additional excavations have unearthed tombs with mummies, tools, ceramic works, painted pottery and other artistic artifacts. Such diversity was encouraged by the cultural contacts resulting from this area's position on the Silk Road. Early Buddhist sculptures and murals excavated at Miran show artistic similarities to the traditions of Central Asia and North India and stylistic aspects of paintings found there suggest that Miran had a direct connection with the West, specifically Rome and its provinces. See also Tocharians Geography of China Silk Road transmission of Buddhism Kara Khanid Khanate Kunlun Mountains 
Flaming Mountains Taklamakan Desert Tarim Mummies Turpan Water System Topic. Notes Topic. References Baumer, Christoph, 2000. Southern Silk Road, In the Footsteps of Sir Oral Stein and Sven Hedin. White Orchid Books. Bangkok. Beller Han, Ildi Ko, 2008. Community Matters in Xinjiang, 1880-1949, Towards a Historical Anthropology of the Uyghur. Brill. ISBN 9004166750. Hill, Jan 2004. The Peoples of the West from the Wailu Weilu by Yu Huan Yu Huan, a 3rd century Chinese account composed between 239 and 265 CE. Draft annotated English translation. 1. Hill, John E. 2009, Through the Jade Gate to Rome, A Study of the Silk Roots During the Later Han Dynasty, 1st to 2nd Centuries CE. Booksurge, Charleston, South Carolina. ISBN 978-1-4392-2134-1. Mallory, J. P. and Mare, Victor H. 2000. The Tarim Mummies, Ancient China and the Mystery of the Earliest Peoples from the West. Thames and Hudson. London. ISBN 0-500-05101-1 EDM E. Mantel, Malta Conrad Brunn Dit Conrad Malta Brunn, Pierre-Étienne Herbin de Halley 1804. Géographie mathématique, physique et politique de toutes les parties du monde, volume 12. H. Tardieu. Retrieved 10 March 2014. Millward, James A. 1998. Beyond the Pass, Economy, Ethnicity, and Empire in Qing Central Asia, 1759-1864 Illustrated ed. Stanford University Press. ISBN 0804729336. Retrieved 10 March 2014. Stein, Oral M. 1907. Ancient Khotan, Detailed Report of Archaeological Explorations in Chinese Turkestan, 2 vols. Clarendon Press. Oxford. 2. Stein, Oral M. 1921. Syrindia, Detailed Report of Explorations in Central Asia and Westernmost China, 5 vols. London and Oxford. Clarendon Press. Reprint, Delhi. Mudalal Banarsidas, 1980. 3. Stein Oral M. 1928. Innermost Asia, Detailed Report of Explorations in Central Asia, Khan Su and Eastern Iran, 5 vols. Clarendon Press. Reprint, New Delhi. Cosmo Publications, 1981. Topic external links Downloadable article, Evidence that a West East admixed population lived in the Tarim Basin as early as the Early Bronze Age Lee et al. BMC Biology 2010, 815. 4. Silk Road Seattle, University of Washington The Silk Road Seattle website contains many useful resources including a number of full-text historical works. The International Dunhuang Project Along the Ancient Silk Routes, Central Asian Art from the West Berlin State Museums, an exhibition catalogue from the Metropolitan Museum of Art fully available online as PDF, which contains material from the Tarim Basin.